Good morning. Thank you for being here this morning. We got uh, folks coming in the door. We got some more folks who are going to be coming in. We got folks joining us online. It's going to be a good morning of worship together. We are so excited that you chose to do this morning. If you haven't been a part of our worship uh, here on campus, I want to let you know about a couple of things. First of all, uh, we have child care available. If you got kids with you, you're welcome to keep them with you all during worship. But for our third grade and younger, uh, take advantage of our kids' classes or our nursery, you know, stuff for our toddlers, you're welcome uh, to take your kids right across our lobby to the kids' check-in area. And we got volunteers ready to take care of them while you continue to worship with us. So feel free to with you that you're welcome to do that. We have activity bags, if that would help. We have activity bags available right outside this door right here. If you just go uh, out the door and turn to your right, we have some activity bags to help keep them engaged uh, while we're worshiping together. So you're welcome to get um, one of those if you need to. Uh, I also want to let everyone know that we will be taking communion today. We'll have some thoughts and a prayer for, uh, for our uh, communion celebration. And when we do that, you should have a communion cup that looks like this uh, sitting on your chair. And when we take communion together, we'll peel off the first lid and eat the wafer and peel off the second lid and drink the juice. And that's how we'll take communion together this morning. So I wanted you to know about those things. The last thing I want to make sure uh, to mention to you as you're coming in this morning, we have uh, bulletins available uh, on about every other chair here in the worship center. And we'd like for you to open that up. You can see a lot of different information and some things that are coming up with the Flagstone family. We want you to be aware of for our teenagers, for our adults, uh, things to put on your calendar, things to invite other people to. So we want you to be aware um, of those things. The two special things I want to mention to you this morning. First of all, this QR code right up here in, a, in this corner of your bulletin. That's for our guests who are with us today. If this is your first or second time with us. Uh, or maybe third or fourth, and you just never actually let us know, uh, let us know that you've been here before. Uh, if you'll take a, a moment to do that right now, just click on that QR code, and that will open on your phone a, a quick form just to give us your contact information. Just to let us know that you've been here. We might uh, send you an email or text, say, hey, thanks for coming. Thanks for being part of our worship. We're like that. We just want to know who you are. We want to thank you for coming and being part of our worship. And uh, also offer any information about a church family we can give to you. So please do that right now. It'll take you about 30 seconds if this is our code for us, if you would. Now, for everyone else, we haven't done this before, so I, I, wanted, I wanted to point this out to you. We have another QR code today. Okay, it's right here in the middle. This is for all of our Flagstone family. If you take uh, the time to do this this morning, just click on that um, with your phone and a membership form. And you may be thinking to yourself, but I'm already a member of the Flagstone family. And that's fine. We want everybody, myself included, to fill out this form uh, because we are updating our records. We, between COVID and changes, we know we've, there's some, some uh, people's contact information that has fallen through the cracks. And we want to make sure that we get that all updated. So we'd like for all of our Flagstone family, if you would, it won't take you very long. If you'll just click on that, that will open up a form uh, that has um, outlined what it means to be a member at Flagstone. And then just a form for you to fill out all of your contact information. And that's going to go, when you submit that, that goes into our One Church database. And then you'll get an email back. Uh, that will explain to you how to access your information uh, in, our, in our church database. So we need your help with that, uh, and we would love for you to take the time to do that. Okay, I think that's all I need to share with you this morning so we can get into our worship time. Thank you for being here. Thank you for choosing to be a part of our worship. I'm excited to be singing and praying with you today and spending time with the Word today. We're going to be blessed by being together this morning. Our praise team is going to do an awesome job leading us in worship and uh, we, we, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, we're going to be thankful for that. We're going to celebrate that. We're going to spend time with the Word today and be challenged uh, by God and, and in His presence today. I'm just excited to be worshiping. Let's pray. Let's ask God to bless our worship. And then let's begin worshiping Him together. Father God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the opportunity to get together, to, to uh, see familiar faces, to see new faces. And Lord, I, I pray that, that we see you in each other today. As we smile and laugh and share and talk and visit, uh, may we recognize what an awesome thing it is to be a part of a church family. And for those who are looking for a church family that may have, may have chosen to come here this morning, God, may they see you in us and may they feel uh, your presence in this place. And may they feel uh, connected to us and want to be more a part of what we have going on here. God, as we worship you today, as we sing praises to your name, as we are already praying to you, as we prepare for a time when you speak to us, God, I, I pray we would open our hearts to whatever it is that you want us to hear. And Father, if there are people who need to make some changes in their lives, if there are people who are struggling right now, if there are people who need help, Lord, give those things to you and to allow you to speak. 
Good morning. Great to see everybody this morning. And for those of you that are worshiping with us online, uh, thanks for joining us. Here in just a few minutes, Marshall is going to start a new series. He's going to be talking about why Flagstone exists or what our mission is. The mission is to reach out, to connect, and to serve. And he's going to be talking about reaching out. So when was the last time that you thought, well, I need to reach out to somebody. I need to reach out to my a uh, member of my family, one of my friends, or a co-worker. Well, this past week, a friend of mine, her mother had died. And I thought, well, you know, she's a good friend of mine. I really need to reach out. My mother had passed, so I thought I could really relate to her on that as well. And I knew she'd appreciate me reaching out to her to show that I cared. See, reaching out is easy when we know the person or it's a co-worker or maybe even more telling, we reach out when we know we have something that we can gain from reaching out. But, you see, I think you know where I'm going with this. Reaching out is not so easy if we don't know the person or we don't think we can gain anything from it. But as Christians, we really don't have the choice of not reaching out. There's several stories about Jesus' mission of seeking and saving the lost. In Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, he says that the that, uh, Son of Man was sent to seek and save the lost. And Jesus actually gave his life for his mission. So now as we take this communion meal, let us help him to remember that mission that Jesus gave his life and that in doing so, he gave each of us the assurance of a life with him in heaven. And that's why reaching out is important. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you now at this time of this communion meal, we ask that you be with us and direct our minds, forgive us of our sins, and help us to be bold and to reach out and to share your story. We ask that you bless this wafer that represents your body and this juice that represents your blood. We ask these things in your son's name. Amen.
Let's all stand up for the song before Marshall's lesson this morning. I don't know about y'all, but if you saw the topic as we were getting ready for this week, there was a certain song that kept going through my head. Um, it's not your song. Um, Marshall's theory this week, or this month, is this is why we do it. And I was going to that song. This is how we do it. And so I'm assuming that's going to be his walk up music every time he comes up on Sunday. Um, we're not singing that one before the sermon. All right, we'll sing this one, then we march. There is an endless song that goes in my soul. I hear the music ring. And though the storms may come, I am holding on. And to the rock I cling. How can I keep from singing your praise? So when I was in, uh, well, elementary school, junior high, high school, I played uh, basketball. I went to uh, a small school where the only sport that we had was basketball. So you either played that or, or you didn't play anything. So I, I played basketball, and, and um, there were times when I played basketball that, you know, we were practicing. We were doing some things in practice, and, and you know, you just, whatever the drill was, whatever the, the skill was that we were working on, there's just those times where you think to yourself, man, why are we doing this? This is, this is dumb. This is a waste of time. I'm looking at, at Darren right here as a football coach. I'm guessing players often look at you, maybe not say it out loud, but coach, why are we doing this, right? I mean, th we have those times. Uh, I've coached uh, you know, little league teams, and there were, there were times where we would be working on drills, and I would just stop and be like, do y'all understand why we're doing this, why we're going through the mechanics of throwing a baseball, why we're working on, uh, you know, swinging a bat this way, why we're working on this tackling drill. Here's why. This is the reason why. Um, and there, but then there's other things, you know, th those are sports related, but there were times uh, when I was doing schoolwork, and I'd be thinking, why in the world am I doing this? When am I ever? When am I ever going to use this? Anybody ever make that statement out loud to your teachers? How many teachers ever hear that statement from a student? Right? Yeah, okay. I, you know, my, all three of my boys have said that at one time or another about work that they've had uh, at school. And, and, you know, some of them have articulated that to the teachers, and we had to have a conversation about that. But anyway... And there's, there's times at our jobs where we're thinking, what is the purpose? Why am I doing this? Um, I've told this church family before, there was a, th that when we used to take, uh, when I was doing youth ministry, we used to take a bunch of teenagers to uh, Duluth, Minnesota, and there was this lady that had just, just this 
awful house. I mean, you see the, the TV shows like Hoarders, and like she would have made the all-star team of Hoarders. I mean, it's just awful. And every summer we would go back, and it would be the same thing again. And you would, you would clean some of that, and we'd spend all day cleaning and throwing away a year's worth of just nastiness. And there's part of it where you're just like, why? Why are we even doing this? It's not even doing any good. And then you would have a conversation with this woman who had some physical challenges and couldn't, couldn't take care of some of those things on her own. And she was amazed that somebody would go out of their way to drive from Arkansas to come clean her house. And why would people do that? We would get to talk to her about Jesus. And it was, uh, so that was, that was a good reason why. And it, I, think, I think we struggle sometimes with just, you know, being told to do something or, or just having to take some kind of action and, and wonder what the purpose is. Maybe one of the classic examples of this that at least I thought of was the movie The Karate Kid. Anybody remember the original movie of The Karate Kid? And, you know, The Karate Kid, you know, Daniel has to go and he has to, like, wax the car. Y'all remember? How do you do that? Wax on, wax off, right? And he had to paint the fence and he had, you know, do the, do the motions with his hands, you know, paint up, paint down, the whole, the whole thing. And, and he gets mad. He's done this all day and his muscles are cramping at the end of the day and he's, he thinks he's just been used for free labor. He's like, why'd you have me do all this? And then Mr. Miyagi, wise man that he is, goes, you know, has him uh, start doing all the moves and he's blocking, all, it's just the basic common defensive moves in karate that he got to learn because he waxed on, waxed off, and painted the fence. Now, I don't know really anything about martial arts, so I don't know if any of those techniques actually work. But you get this concept in the movie. You get to see, like, oh, this is why. This is why I'm doing this. This is why I'm waxing on, waxing off. This is why I'm painting the fence. This is why, it, it, you know, just think about our own lives. This is why I'm doing this project. This is why we're working on this. This is why I'm going to talk to this person or have this conversation. And I want you to think about, I want you to be thinking about why we do certain things. What's the motivation behind them? Some of the things that we're challenged by, some of the things that we may not even necessarily like to do. Hold on to that thought because we're going to come back to it. As Bobby mentioned uh, just a minute ago, I wanted to remind this church family or, or even tell some of you that, have, that are brand new to our church family that we do have a mission here. We have a mission here at Flagstone. There's, there's a there's, there's, something that, there's something to our existence. There's a reason why we believe that we're here, and there's, there's something that we think that God is leading this church family to and, and, and uh, is leading us in the direction that we need to go. And this is it. This is our mission statement. Because of the grace of Jesus Christ, the Flagstone family exists to reach out, connect, and serve. Now, I saw some of you guys doing it. If you're new here, if you're watching online for the first time, this is audience participation time, so we all know what our mission statement is, okay? So we exist to reach out. Everybody, both hands out. We actually, reach out. See, this is not reaching out. All right? Reach out, connect, and serve. We're going to open our hands up and serve people, okay? Reach out, connect, serve. Reach out, connect, serve. We almost had 100% participation. That's pretty good for us. We want our church family to constantly be reminded and mindful of what our mission is. And even the first part of this, we don't have hand motions, but it's so vitally important. Because of the grace of Jesus Christ, because of, of what Jesus did for us, because of what we've already worshipped about and sung about and even celebrated in communion together this morning, that the, that the very Son of God left his throne in heaven and came down to this planet and allowed his own creation to abuse and mistreat and kill him so that we can have freedom from our sins and from our guilt and from all the problems of this life. Jesus did that for us because he loves us that much. That is the epitome of grace. And because of that grace, because this church family and people in this church family know what it's like to be forgiven and to be set free, because of that, because we know what that's like, we choose to reach out to other people and to try to make connections and, and to take advantage of opportunities to serve others. That is our mission. That is what we feel called to do. That is what we feel God is leading us to do. And we've talked about 
<coughs> excuse me, I, could, I kept fighting it for a while. I just couldn't. Anyway, we've been talking about that for a while. I mean, uh, uh, multiple times over the years. Because I want, us, I want that to constantly be on, on the minds of our membership. In the minds of our church family, we are constantly aware of what our mission is. What we're here to do. And, and if you want to, you know, we, we've talked about this even a few months ago. And if you want to, to be reminded of some of those things, we had a series uh, back this summer called, uh, earlier this summer called Own, Own the Vision. And I would invite you to go back on our YouTube channel and, and look at that and know what our mission is and know what our vision is and, and how we're trying to accomplish that. I'm not going to talk about the, as much about what our mission is or how to accomplish our mission today. Because we're starting a new series and, and, and this is what uh, we want to be focused on this morning. When we think about this mission that we have, I want us to be thinking about this is, this is why we do this. This is why we have this mission. This is why, you know, and, and Jordan was right, man. I, I thought about having the Montel Jordan song playing, this is how we do it, and just let everybody just go nuts when the, when the music started. I think that Facebook would flag us and probably kick us off Facebook altogether if we did that. So we'll just have to, we'll have to sing it together, Jordan. I think we'll just get the praise team to practice. And this is why we do it. Okay, anyway, I want us, I want us as a church family and even our guests to understand why we meet to worship and, and why we have connection groups that we talked about last week and why we, have, why we ask for volunteers and why we encourage people to give. Because I, I firmly believe that when we together have a clearer vision of why we're doing what we're doing, we'll be more, more motivated to actually do what we believe God is leading us to do. There's so many times that we get frustrated with different things in life on our job, you know, chores at home, all sorts of different things that, that we, we might do them, we might do them half-heartedly because we don't see the purpose behind it. And once I see the why, once I understand the why, then it, then it moves me to do the what and the how. I'm more motivated to take action when I know the reason why. And so this morning I want to talk about our mission statement. The first, the first key element of that mission statement, reaching out. We want to talk about what that means. I mean, who is it that we're reaching out to? Who am I supposed to reach out to? If the Flagstone family exists to reach out, I want, I want to make sure we're clear on that. Reach out, reaching out, it could be anybody. It can be coworkers. it could be neighbors, it could be friends, it could be people who have kids in the same school activities that our kids are in. It could be total strangers. It could be family members, somebody sitting right across the table from us at lunch today. Reaching out is all about seeing someone who is, who is struggling or seeing someone who is lost or seeing someone who needs a friend, someone who's, who's wrapped up in some kind of an addiction, seeing someone who who is afraid, someone who, who used to have a relationship with God and doesn't anymore, someone who is stuck in sin, someone who is stuck in busyness, someone who is stuck in loneliness, someone who is just looking for more in this life than what they've got right now. Just having open eyes to see that and then, and then finding some way to have a conversation with them, to find some way to offer to help, to offer to pray, to, to invite them to something that, that we're a part of, to invite them to our connection group, to invite them to church, to invite them to coffee, to, to just not just look at a person who may be dealing with something and just go, hmm, that's a shame, I wish they had it better, but to actually take action and reach out to them and initiate contact and initiate a conversation. And even if I'm not the one to actually provide the help, to find some way to, you know, Offer resources. Take them to somebody who can help. That's what reaching out is all about. That I don't just see people in need. I don't just see opportunities that somebody needs to capitalize on and pass on by. I actually take action. I actually initiate action to try to make some kind of a connection with that person. I'm reaching out to them. That's part of the mission of this church. That should be my own, part of my own personal mission, especially if I'm going to be a part of this church family. It's something that defines Flagstone, and it's something that should define me. Now, again, today, I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about how to do that. 
although that's important. And I'm going to talk about all the ways, you know, that, that we can reach out, although there's a whole bunch of different ones. This morning, just for a few more minutes, I want us to, to focus on the why. Why does it matter? Why, why should I reach out to other people? What, what's the point? Why is this important? Why should I be reaching out? Let me give you a handful of reasons this morning and we'll be done. I think the one reason that, that we should reach out to other people when, they, when we have the opportunity to is because we believe that people need Jesus. We believe that. We believe that people need Jesus. We believe that we live in a fallen, broken world. We live in a world that is full of sin and hurt and pain and resentment and hate and anger and selfishness and regret and guilt. And that is not the world that God designed in the first place, but it's the world we have now. And it's the world that we're living in. It's the world that that our culture is, is engulfed in. And we believe that all of us, Not just people outside these walls, not just people that are watching something else on their screen this morning, that all of us have fallen short, that that God designed all of us to be an image of Him, to look like Him in everything that we do in this world, and everything that we say, and all of our actions, and all of our mindsets need to be a reflection of God, and we have all fallen short of that. At some point, we have all chosen to do something different than what God designed for us initially. And maybe we've fallen short a dozen times, or maybe we've fallen short 10,000 dozen times. I don't even know if that's a number, but maybe we've fallen short that many times. It doesn't matter. We have all fallen short. We are all full of sin, and we are all carrying the guilt of those sins. And there's nothing that we could do about it. And I believe that's why God sent Jesus. To provide forgiveness. To provide freedom. To provide hope and life. To to take away guilt. To take away shame. To take away frustration and anger and hurt. We believe that, that counseling and therapy and support groups and self help techniques. All those are great. We fully support all those things. But what people need, first and foremost, is Jesus. We believe that. There's a story that I've told this church family about before in Matthew chapter 8. If you look in your Bibles, your Bible apps, it's in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all talk about the life of Jesus here on this earth. And the first one of those books, the book of Matthew tells a story of Jesus, uh, of a leper coming to Jesus. Someone who has some kind of a, some kind of a you know, skin disease, and maybe it was leprosy or maybe it just looked like leprosy, but whatever it was, it was this infectious disease. And, and, and the Jewish culture that Jesus lived in, if somebody had leprosy, you had to stay away from them. You had to completely, if you touched them, if you even just, if you even touched their clothes that they were wearing, you were considered unclean at least for the rest of that day, maybe longer. And so that meant that you couldn't go be around your family. You couldn't go be around other people. Why? Because you, basically you got cooties from them. You had the uncleanness cooties from them, and you couldn't be around anybody else. And I know that sounds kind of childish, but that was the, that was the mindset. I have gotten your uncleanness that has caused this disease all over me now just by touching you. And it was so prevalent in Jesus' culture, this, this distance that they wanted to create between these people, that lepers, if they ever came around someone in a public place that may not be aware that they were lepers, they had to cry out, they had to scream out, unclean, unclean, to make sure that that person didn't come close enough to them where they might get that uncleanness on them. Can you imagine walking through walking through the school building, walking through your workplace, walking through the gates of the Razorback game, wherever you're at, where there's a whole bunch of other people around, and you have to cry out, whatever is wrong with you. And you have to shout it out so that people know. And you have to maintain distance from everybody. 
Can you imagine living that kind of life? Can you imagine how humiliating that was? Can you imagine how lonely that was? Some of us can imagine it because we felt that way with just some own choices and sins and consequences in our own lives. It's not leprosy, but it's something else. And whether somebody else told us we were unclean or we just started feeling that way, we feel like there's a spotlight on our flaws and everybody knows it and nobody else wants to come around because of it. And it is a embarrassing, lonely feeling. Here's this man that comes to Jesus in Matthew chapter 8. And I know the verse has been on the screen. He says in verse 2, uh, he comes to Jesus and says, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Look at what Jesus, look at what the scripture says that Jesus did. Jesus did what? Reached out. Everybody say that out loud. Jesus reached out. One more time. Jesus reached out. He reached out his hand and touched him. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Look at the, look at the question that this, this man is asking. Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Lord, I, I, I can't do anything about this. I am stuck in, in this situation. I'm in this mess. I don't want to be here, but there's nothing that I can do about it. But if you're willing, God, if you're willing, maybe, maybe you can do something about it. I don't want to be where I am anymore, but I can't get help from anywhere else. And Jesus says, yeah, I'm willing. And the beautiful thing about this scripture that I missed for so many years, if you go back to the ancient Greek language that this scripture was originally written in, we, we translate it in our modern English that Jesus touched the man. And, and there's all sorts of different ways to touch somebody. And I think most of us, you know, at least when I was growing up, I, I thought that Jesus went like, boop, be clean. And, and all of a sudden the leprosy was gone. It's like this magic touch. The, the Greek word, the original Greek word that we translate as touch means to grab hold of, sometimes means to embrace. And that's the picture that I have in this moment. When this man comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, people keep their distance from me and it's, it's lonely and I'm sick of it and I can't do anything about it. Is there anything you can do? And Jesus says, yeah, and grabs a hold of him. Steps into the mess with him to pull him out of it. Who needs somebody like that in their lives? We all do, don't we? Don't we? If I need that kind of Savior in my life, don't I have a friend, a co-worker, a neighbor, a family member who needs it too? That's why we reach out. That's one of the reasons why we reach out. Jesus literally and figuratively, figuratively reached out to this man. Where he was, grabbed a hold of him in the mess he was in and said, let's, let's do something different. I can set you free from it. Now, I can't, I can't cure leprosy. I can't cure somebody's sin. But I've got a Savior who can. And I can reach out and grab a hold of them and bring them to him. And that's why. That's why we reach out. Because we believe that people need Jesus. We also believe that, that people need a church family. People need a church family to, to connect to and to be a part of. And so we reach out to people who don't have that, who don't have the friendships that we have and the connections that we have and the opportunities that we have to serve together and the fellowship that we create with each other. There's people all around us who don't have that. They don't know what it's like. They're missing it even if they don't know that they're missing it. We believe people need a church family to be a part of. Jesus said that himself. In John chapter 10, he describes himself as a shepherd and us, you know, his followers as his sheep. 
And he talks about what that relationship is like. But notice what he says in verse 16 of John chapter 10. He says, I have other sheep that are not a part of this sheep pen. I must bring them also, and they too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. What's Jesus saying? I've got followers, and I'm, I'm protecting them, and I'm, I'm leading them, and I'm doing everything I can to be a blessing to them. But there's other people that need to be a part of this too. Jesus Christ himself recognized people need to be together in this following of me. We need to follow him together in community, and there's people who need to be a part of it who aren't already. We mentioned last week that we, that we are designed by God with a need for relationship, a need for connection. We weren't meant to live this life alone. And this church family believes that we need those relationships. We need, we need a place to feel safe. We need a place to feel accepted. We need a place to feel sometimes challenged. We need a place where, where people can lock arms with us and walk with us through the good stuff in our lives and the challenges too. We need that, folks. We need church. And there are people who don't know what it's like to be a part of a loving church family. And they need it. And they may not even know that they need it. And that's why we reach out. That's why we invite. That's why we share and say, hey, this is what my church is doing. That's, that's why. Because we believe people need to experience what we're experiencing. We should reach out because, well, quite honestly, we're given opportunities to reach out. If you're walking across a parking lot and you see a $10 bill on the ground, you're going to leave it sitting there? Thank you. <laughs> For those of you who didn't hear that online, I got a solid answer. No, we're not going to leave that on the ground. What are we going to do? We're going to pick it up. Why? Because it's there. When I was, when I, I don't know if my mom's going to be watching this later on today or not, but when I was a kid in our house, all the walls uh, were painted white and above most of the doorposts were fingerprints on the top of the doorposts because for years when I would run through the house and later on I would just walk through the house, I'm reaching up and slapping doorposts. Anybody else ever do this? I'm, I'm. If I could hang from the doorpost, I would, but, you know, that would probably end up bad. But, I, you know, just running through, slapping doorposts, touching doorposts, you know, pretending that I'm doing some kind of dunk on, on the doorpost. And I had all these fingerprints all over the doorpost. Why did I do that? I don't know. It was there. There's a doorpost there, and I'm going to slap my hand on it. That, I, I have no other explanation than it was there. We were, um, some of you got to watch the Arkansas-Texas football game last week uh, on television. Some of us were there in person. Anytime something good happened for the Razorbacks, I'm high-fiving strangers all around me, you know. Uh, we're just, and I know there's all, probably all sorts of COVID violations that we were committing during the game together, but I'm just I'm like, I don't even know this person, but something good happened. Woohoo! We're just, yeah! I mean, I think I even hugged a total stranger. Why? Because they were there. They had their hand up, so I slapped it. It was there. Sometimes, many times, the reason that we do things is because the opportunity is there to do it. Because we need Jesus, because we need church, I think God constantly puts opportunity in front of us to reach out to someone who needs him, who needs help, who needs, who needs connection, who needs friendships, who needs answers. God puts that person in the cubicle next to us. God puts that person in the house across the street from us. God puts that person on the bleachers next to us while we're watching, you know, our, our kids do whatever we're watching our kids do. God does that. He puts the opportunity in front of us, and I need to take advantage of it. I need to reach out, and I, I need to reach out to that person. Why? Because the opportunity is there. Because the opportunity is there. I mentioned a, a few minutes ago, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? The next book after those books is called the book of Acts. And that's when the church first started. That's after Jesus has gone, uh, you know, back uh, up to heaven, has left his disciples in charge of continuing his mission on this earth. 
And in Acts chapter 3, there's a story told of, of this crippled man. In verse 2, it says, A man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those who were going into the temple courts. Every day, this guy had been, he, he you know, couldn't walk. He had been placed at this particular gate. Every day, he begged for people to give him money. Every day, people either, you know, threw coins or probably most of them just passed by, just, you know, dismissed him. If they even looked at him, they, they dismissed him altogether. And then Peter and John come walking through the temple. And they see the same man. And, and I don't know that it was even their intention to do anything about it. They just happened to be coming to the temple. And here's this guy who's always here. But he's crippled. He can't do anything for himself. He can't walk. He has to be picked up and put by this gate every single day. And Peter looks at him in verse 6 of Acts chapter 3 and says, Silver or gold I don't have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. Peter, literally and figuratively, reached out to this man, and he helped him walk. Why? Because he was there, and he needed help, and Peter could do something about it. That's why. The opportunity was there. Peter and John could very easily have been like, man, we got people to go talk to about Jesus over here. We got people who want to know about this church. We got to meet with the other apostles and decide how we're going to kind of organize this whole church thing. They had all sorts of things that were probably on their minds and in a different direction to go. But in that moment, there was a guy who needed help. He needed, he needed assistance. He needed someone to reach out to him. So what did Peter do? He reached out to him because the opportunity was there. And I don't want to be too simplistic, but folks, I believe that one of the reasons why we reach out is because God gives us opportunities to reach out. God puts people in our lives. God puts people in our workplaces and, and just in, in different scenarios with us so that we can initiate a conversation, so that we can invite them to be a part of something that we're a part of. Whatever it is, the opportunity is there. Why did I reach out? Because that person needed me to reach out to them. We believe people need Jesus. We believe people need church. We believe God puts opportunities in front of us. These are the reasons why we reach out. And real quick, one more reason. We reach out to other people because we have been reached out to. We know what it's like for someone to reach out to us. Some of us in this room, some folks watching online, the whole reason that you're even with us this morning is because somebody reached out to you at some point. Invited you to check out this church. Some people in this room, some people online, the whole reason that you even have a relationship with Jesus is because somebody took the time to reach out to you. And say, I see what you struggle with in life. I see where your life is right now and there could be something better. And let me, let me introduce you to Jesus. There's, there's people who, are, who have been reached out to. They've been, they've been invited by someone. They've been invested in by someone else. And the reason that they have faith, the reason that they, that they experience salvation, the reason that, that they have connection with God's church is because someone else took advantage of the opportunity. Someone else believed in them and said, I see that they need Jesus and they need a church family and I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity to reach out to them. And, and if that's what I've experienced... I know what it's like. I know what it's like for somebody to reach out to me. So why wouldn't I go reach out to somebody else? I know what it's like to have sin in my life. I know what it's like to be frustrated and be overwhelmed and to feel empty and alone, to be in, it wrapped up in an, in an addiction to, that I've been set free from, to have my own hurt that I've caused other people, to have those things forgiven, to have hurts that people have caused me, to be able to let go of those things and not hold on to resentment anymore. I know what that's like because somebody else reached out to me and helped me find freedom from those things. Why wouldn't I go reach out to somebody else? If I know what it's like to be reached out to, I need to reach out to somebody else. 
And for all of us, folks, one of the, one of the main reasons that we have hope and grace and forgiveness and joy and peace in this life is because Jesus Christ reached out to us. All of us. And maybe, maybe some of you are like me, where you, you grew up going to church. You don't, even, you don't even remember a time in your life when you didn't have faith, at least on some level. You still fell short. I fell short. As many times as I grew up going to church and memorizing Bible verses and going to youth group activities and all those kinds of things, I still sinned. A lot. And I needed a Savior. And Jesus reached out to me. He still does. I know what it's like to be reached out to. And because I know what it's like to be set free from the stuff that I beat myself up for. To, to have the freedom from, from the things that have enslaved me in the past or that I keep holding on to the chains of. To, to have a, a Savior that wants to and has the power to set me free from all those things and just wants to reach out to me in the mess that I get myself in and pull me out of it. To have experienced that myself, why wouldn't I want other people to experience that too? This is what Paul is getting at in Philippians chapter 3 when he says, when he's talking about his own life and, and what he's trying to accomplish in his life. And he says, I haven't already obtained all this or, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Paul says, he reached out to me and my life was never the same because of it. And that's why I reach out to other people. Because I've been reached out to. Whether I look at that as Jesus himself or as somebody else in my life, I've been reached out to. I've been pulled from whatever it was I was in. Of course I would want to reach out to someone else, wouldn't I? So let's be a church that does that. Let's own the mission. Because we know why. And we can talk more one-on-one -on -one or, or together in our connection groups about the how. How do I do that? What does that look like? But this morning, folks, I just want us all together to understand the reason why. This is why. This is why we try to make connections with people who don't have a church family. This is why we try to make connections with people who, who don't have a relationship with Jesus or who used to have one that walked away from it. This is why. I, I love the series um, from, man, it's been almost 20 years now, I guess, uh, Band of Brothers that followed this, this army unit through the, the story of this army unit as they, as they made their way through World War II. And there's one particular, as you get to the end of that season, there's like uh, 10 episodes all together. And I think, it's, I think it's the next to the last one where these soldiers who have, who have uh, you know, parachuted into France and who have gone through all sorts of battles and, and been in the Battle of Bastogne where they, where they were, you know, didn't have winter clothing, didn't have supplies, and so many lost their lives and so many suffered, you know, injuries and, and uh, just the the mental breakdowns that, that they had to try to fight off as as they were fighting across Europe, all these things that they've endured, all the things that they've gone through, and they and you start to to sense that that the war is coming to a close. And when we look back from where we are in history now, look back to them like, yeah, it's not very far from the end. But well, they don't know that at that time. And there's part of them they're asking the question, why why have we done this? Why are we over here? I mean, the German, the German soldiers are starting to surrender, and the question becomes, why are, we even, why are we even fighting? If they were going to surrender in the first place, why do we even come over here? And this particular group, by accident, comes across what we call concentration camps, comes across a prison camp for Jewish people and gypsies and other people that the Germans determined were undesirable. And you know from your history classes 
the awful conditions that those people had to endure for no other reason than just their race. And, and there's a scene in the, in, in the movie, you can see kind of a, a picture over here where they come and find this concentration camp. There's these, there's these people that are just literally skin and bones. They've been going without food for who knows how long. They're, the disease is rampant. There's, there's dead bodies everywhere. And the soldiers end up finding food for them. They end up setting these people free. And they realize this is why. All the things we've done, all the battles that we've gone through, all the, all the miles that we've marched, all the places that we've gone, all the things that we've endured, all the, all the, all the things we've had to fight off, and all, all the fatigue and everything that we've dealt with, this is why. So that these people who are living this awful life can be set free and be given life again. Folks, that's our why. There are people around us, no matter what our age is, no matter what part of town we live in, no matter what schools our kids go to, no matter where our job is, no matter how many or how few zeros are in our paycheck, no matter our skin color, no matter our gender, it doesn't matter. God puts people in our lives. God puts us in front of other people who are imprisoned by sin and by guilt and by hurt and by loneliness and by addictions and by regret and resentment and anger. They're there. They're right in front of us. And when we talk about our mission of this church, that somebody, somebody should reach out to that person, it should be me. And this is why. So that person can be set free from whatever it is that they're dealing with. That's why. And once we, once we take hold of the why, the how and the what becomes a whole lot easier. We'll figure out how to reach out. We'll figure out what ways we can do that. But let's make sure that we hold on to the why. This is why. And I want us to, to know that together as a church family. I want any guests here to know that we, we, this is why we exist to reach out to people who need to be reached out to. So I'm going to wrap up this morning. We're going to sing a song. It's a, it's a, a song that's actually a prayer to God, asking Him to turn our hearts, to get our hearts focused where they need to be so that, so that He can use us. And as we're singing this song, folks, if there's anything in your life that is keeping you from, from a connection with God, a connection with Jesus, or is keeping you from seeing the opportunities that he's putting around you because you're so wrapped up in, in your priorities and your busyness and in, in some relationship, in some sin, that's keeping you from seeing opportunities that God has given you to reach out to somebody else because he's reached out to you, I would challenge you while we're singing that song. If you're willing to come forward and share that with us. I've got this thing in my life and it's keeping me from reaching out to somebody else. And we will surround you with love and with prayer and, and whatever help we can give to get rid of that burden. So you can be set free to reach out yourself. If there's any of you this morning that are struggling with anything. In Romans chapter 10 God says, I, I've, I've been holding out my hand. I've been reaching out to people all day long, waiting for them to take hold of it, take hold of it themselves so I can pull them out of what they're in. My God's reaching right now. And if you want to be set free from whatever it is, there's no judgment here. We want to we wanna know what it is so we can help you find freedom in him. If you're willing to share that with us this morning, when we stand in just a second and start singing, you're welcome to come to the front and share that with us. If you want somebody to share that with, but you don't want to walk all the way to the front, we'll have a couple of shepherds in each one of the corners of this room, and you can go find one of them. If that's still awkward and weird, my contact information is in that bulletin on, on your seat. Shoot me an email as soon as we're done today. And we'll get together and we'll talk about how to find freedom. Let's be a church that reaches out.
starting today. If we can help make that happen, we want to. While together we stand and sing. Turn my heart over like rivers of water. Real quick, I want to show you this again uh, in case you missed it at the beginning of our worship time this morning. Uh, for our guests that are here, please use that QR code up in the corner of that bulletin. Let us know that you're here this morning. But for all of our members, all of our Flagstone family, if you'll use this QR code right here in the middle of the bulletin today, we're going to, talk, we're going to remind you of this for the next couple of weeks too. Uh, if you would do that and update your membership information for us um, so that we can update all of our records and have a better uh, database for all of our information. It won't take very long at all. If you'll just click on that QR code, the instructions are there, what you need to do next. We really appreciate your help with this. We want to make sure we're staying connected with everybody. And actually, once we get everybody in this system that we're using, it makes it easier for us to connect with each other too. So please take the time to do that today uh, if you would help us out with that. Okay? Thank you. Jeremy? It's been wonderful worshiping with everyone this morning. Um, what a great service and a great um, lesson theme. I'm excited about this one. You know, I truly believe that this mission that we have at Flagstone is, is just a, it's like a perfect sum summary of what we're instructed to do as New Testament, New Testament Christians. And so um, I love our, our mission here and, and uh, believe it really makes an impact. I have just a few announcements. Uh, first of all, please don't forget the giving that we do each week. Uh, there's ways to sign up online to do this automatically if you wish. There's also baskets out in the lobby area if, if you'd like to leave your, your giving there. Um, as a reminder, we've talked about this the past couple of weeks. We had a good kickoff lunch last week. Many of our connection groups are, are kind of kicking off with the first meetings this Sunday or this week at some point. And I want to encourage you all, uh, this is what we showed last week, if, if you're unfamiliar with the different groups, if you weren't here last Sunday or didn't watch it online, you can see a summary at this website address that gives a uh, listing of our different connection groups and uh, a little bit of an explanation of, a rough explanation of the groups, uh, kind of the, the makeup of the groups, but don't let that hold you back. Um, if, if there's a group that sounds interesting and you may not fit the exact mold that it describes, it doesn't matter at all. So feel free to attend or participate or reach out to the person that's coordinating. And uh, I'll put a plug in for the parent of the teens connection group. We are meeting this evening for the first time at 6 p.m. Uh, at Michael and Lori Glenn's house. It should be a great time. And you don't even have, as I mentioned a minute ago, you don't even have to be a parent of a teen. If that just sounds like a cool group of people that you want to be a part of, feel free to show up. Uh, we'd love to have you. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting that started. And I'm sure there's other cool groups that are starting as well. Um, we have some exciting news. We have a couple of families that uh, have chosen to place membership here at Flagstone. You know, I was thinking about this. 
it seems like we've had these announcements like every week for the past four or five weeks. So it's so exciting, so good to see new faces and have, have new members here as, as part of this family. So we'll start with the Langleys. So uh, Jack, Lacey, Kate, and Rowan Langley, if you could raise your hand or stand and say hi to everyone. Good to have you all here. Sweet family. And then we have the Acords, uh, Trey and Ashley Acord. Raise your hands back in the back, back here. So, so those who may not know, and I, and I hope they claim each other, but Trey is the brother of uh, Hannah Manchester, so uh, we're glad to have them here. You guys claim each other, right? Yeah. Sometimes, for now. Yeah. I want to do something a little bit different here um, as I close, or before our closing song, as I, as I offer a prayer. Um, you know, it's not part of typ our typical tradition here at Flagstone, but um, as we have begun reading, those of us who are reading through the Bible in a year, according to this Read Scripture plan that, that many of us are doing, um, we started the New Testament. As Brandon mentioned a few weeks back, we started the New Testament, and uh, it's, it's been so wonderful uh, to start there in the Gospels and start reading through. But, you know, I came across Matthew chapter 6 as I was reading a few weeks ago. And that's where we get the example from Jesus on how to pray. It's often referred to as the Lord's Prayer. And I don't know about you, those, especially those of you who have grown up in the church, it, it almost becomes uh, uh, something that, that you might have recited, you know, weekly or whatever to yourself or as part of a group. I know, I know I grew up doing it as part of my junior high basketball team, which looking back on it was wonderful, you know, in the public schools. I'm so glad we did that. But, um, you know, maybe I, I kind of just breeze through it without really paying attention to the words of that prayer. And as I read it this time here as an adult, um, at least I claim to be, um, it really, it really uh, jumped out at me. And, you know, and as, as with all of the words of Jesus, it's just perfect. If you think about how Jesus concisely spoke to the Father through this prayer and, and all of the different things that it covered in such a concise way, a perfect way, and I thought, what better appropriate way to close out the service this morning than just to read through that example that Jesus gave to us. So if you would bow with me, I'm just going to read directly from the NIV version there in Matthew chapter 6. And I'm going to read this prayer as, as we close in prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Father, we're so thankful for your word. We thank you for Jesus and the life that he lived, and we're so thankful for the examples that he gave us and the guidance that he gave us so that we may uh, worship you and and through Jesus and the blood that was shed on the cross, that we may be with you one day in heaven. Father, as we close this, uh, this worship service this morning, we ask that uh, we take these words and we take uh, the message from this morning and be shining lights in the community as we go out into this week. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, we'll stand up and have one more. We'll be on our way. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. I will not falter, I will not faint. He is my shepherd, I am not afraid. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of Oh, yeah.